What does a choke do? I'll show you. So when you start um, a, a classic vehicle, um, you turn the key, so ignition light, oil pressure light in this case comes on, and um, you put, pull the choke. That is setting the choke. And the amount you pull it depends on how hot the engine is, uh, ambient temperature, it's something you have to learn. Some cars always want full choke. I can tell you a 2CV never does. I've just pulled the cable full out, um, which I never do. She never wants to um, be choked that much. But what it's doing is um, operating this flap here. So that is choking the air supply through the carburetor. It's a twin barrel carburetor on this one. And um, this is the choke cable here. And um, if I start closing the throttle, uh, the chokes, sorry, you can see it, this curve here is also closing the throttle. So what the choke cable is doing, partly it's opening this flap and then secondly it is um, opening the throttle slightly. And there are two reasons for that. One, uh, well actually no, the main reason is for when the carburetor is cold more of the fuel sticks to the sides of the carburetor and so less goes into the engine. So you have to um, compensate for that by richening the mixture so there's more fuel going in and opening the throttle slightly to bring the revs up otherwise it won't idle um, so that's what's going on there and um, in a modern fuel injection system there will be a separate jet usually that will inject more fuel and an idle control valve that will bring the idle to where it should be so a cold start on um, say the City Rover um, it'll start and then all that gubbins works and the revs will be slightly high and as the engine warms you will hear the revs start dropping it all does it automatically uh, but in the olden days we had to do it ourselves and you know that's true on cars going right back to the dawn of motoring and uh, the oldest sorry the latest car I've ever driven that had a manual choke was a 1990 Honda Civic which had twin carburettors but a manual choke and um, worked very well on that one, there were only three positions and um, you, you started in one, you could soon go to the second and then once you're underway, shoved it in. 2CV is very similar, by the time you're into third gear you can push the choke fully home and it's all fine. Other cars can be a bit fussier, um, minis tend to want choke a bit longer so you might have to go a couple of miles before it's warmed up sufficiently for the choke to go home and uh, it, it's just something you have to learn, it's part of owning the car. If you over choke it and run it too rich what can happen is the engine will start misfiring and then you'll get so much petrol going into the cylinders that you'll start washing the oil away from the bores and it might start smoking out the exhaust because of that. That's, that's not a good thing, you really do not want to over choke an engine. So it's definitely not true that more choke is better you, you always want the choke to be the least it can be at any one time. Um, so, like I say, it's just one of those things you have to learn. Um, so, um, if we head to the Invercar, by way of um, contrast, the choke control is um, hidden up here. Uh, let's just open the door. So, it's up here, um, tucked away. And it's exactly the same, that's fully open and that's fully closed. And like the 2CV, it tends to warm up fairly quickly. I don't know if it's an air-cooled engine thing, um, but uh, yeah, it warms up quite quickly and away we go. And um, once, once I'm moving, I can generally get the choke all the way home again. And of course, you, know, you have to remember with these old cars nowadays, people who drive these cars tend to know them quite well and know their way around them. But back when these cars were new, most of the people who were driving 2CVs weren't car enthusiasts. So they were just um, yeah, making it up as they went along and some people didn't understand chokes and um, stuff like that. So um, there you go, that was just a, a quick look at choking your engine.